Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I figured I should go live with this one. So tonight for dinner, I'm making a Tex-Mex casserole. It's, let's see, 714. It's a little late. So it's going to be like 8 before we eat, which I don't really like to do um, because, you know, I go to bed at like 9 and I don't like to eat right before bed. But say la vie, I had to work out. So um, Tex-Mex casserole out of Oshi Glows, Volume 1, this guy right here. It's a good book. So I'm going to, hopefully, I think the lighting's decent. Um, I'm going to, I turn off, because that overhead light right there, I think it, like, shines funny on my head. So I'm trying it without it today. And Kevin just got home with the black beans and the garlic, because we were out. Uh, so... Black beans, garlic, thank you. Zena's very excited, even though he left like two seconds ago. Um, <laughs> she's so special. So. No, this is the right amount of excitement. Uh, all right. Tex Mex casserole, super easy to make. Oops, I forgot to cover my rice. So I have the rice going right now. I'm doing a wild rice, but you could easily do a brown rice or even a white rice if you wanted. Wild brown black rices all have more fiber more protein they're healthier choice than white rice um but it doesn't really i mean whatever personal preference for this one here um rice basics of rice bring water to a boil add your rice bring it back to a boil cover it turn it down to a simmer don't touch it until it's done i don't my students like stir 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 their rice and it's mushy and they're like miss what happened well you stirred your rice so if you stir your rice you get sticky rice so let's not do that. Let's just cover it, simmer it, leave it be. All right, unless you're putting it in the oven or toasting it, it's entirely different. But if you're just doing steamed rice, just steam it, leave it alone. Okay, so we are going to use a red onion um, tonight. Today, what am I doing? Um, cut it in half, because I think we need the whole thing. Yeah, whole thing. We're gonna dice it. Um, I... We'll step you through the steps. I feel like I always step you through the steps of the onion, but you trim off the top and peel again. Um, so my mise en place for this is pretty simple for the most part. It's a little bit of dicing, but it's not too bad. And then what's nice is as some of this stuff is simmering, these layers sucked, so I used my knife to help kind of, you know, peel it off okay so as some of the stuff is sauteing I'm able to chop a little bit more so I'm going to get started with the um the onion garlic bell peppers and the jalapeno and then once I'm having that cooking until softened a little bit about seven eight minutes uh, maybe ten minutes while that's going then I'm able to work on my other mise en place and get everything else um prepped so if you don't remember mise en place is everything in its place it's French it's kind of like the rule of thumb in the kitchen when you're in a culinary environment but it would help you so much in your home environments too so um, onion slice here let me move all this crap sorry um, flat hand right don't cut yourself just slicing through your onions um, nice horizontal slices all right, and try to go as far in as you can with your onion. I'll bring that closer. Ooh, squeaky. And then again, running your blade along the ridges, the natural ridges in that onion to kind of create those nice natural lines. And then you can just small dice. So just slicing your onion knife through, um, you get nice, pretty good, consistent cuts. This is a pretty large red onion, but that's okay. Um, so red onions have a different flavor profile than a yellow onion. They can be a little milder, a little bit sweeter. Um, it just kind of depends. And they often are paired with, okay, so I just had to chop up a few random stragglers. They're often paired with 
Mexican food, right? So you think of like pico de gallo, it's red onion. Um, it just kind of has that flavor profile that pairs well with that. So red onion, bell peppers, Ooh, go well together. So second side here, um, can compost all that. Again, you can use a knife to help peel that top layer if you want. Um, you could also, ooh, these are thick. You could also get a paring knife and then it wouldn't be so intense like you're, you know, just gonna jab a knife into your hand. Um, okay, so slicing through. Oh, I'm so silly. Did I do something funny? I feel like I did something funny. Um, I forgot to do these slices. So doing those slices. It's really hard. <laughs> I struggle to talk and cook at the same time. Um, I get distracted. Shocking, I know. So, let's see. I think I got all the way through. Perfect. Okay, so those are pretty good slices there, or dices. Um, and if you ever get any chunks, you can just run your knife through at the end. Like, that's a ran random weird long piece. So, I'm just going to small dice that up. You generally just want your cuts to be consistent, right? You don't want, like, to have one bite where you chomp on this massive piece of onion and then the next bite you have this tiny little piece so um rule of thumb consistency it's really nice oh i didn't do a good job on that second half okay we're good there um so onion i always like to get my onion sauteed first um to let the flavors really develop i think that a nice slow saute like a sweat of an onion gives it that kind of caramely flavor, um, it develops, it gets it really soft, whereas like your bell peppers don't need quite as long. And if you put them in towards the end, they'll still have more like tooth to them, right? When you bite, they'll be, have more texture and I prefer that. So I'm going to start sauteing my onions um, and then I'll add my garlic next and then the bells, the jalapeno. Um, so let's get a bowl because this is a lot. So we can scoop the onions into the bowl um, to set them aside so then my working space isn't crowded. It's always good to not have too crowded of a working space. You don't want to be, I don't know, like cutting in this tiny little fraction of your cutting board just because you're don't want to dirty a bowl, right? But this will make my life easier. So we'll do that. We're going to do garlic next. This is called a bulb or a head. A lot of people get confused about that. Um, like we're on start with onion and garlic. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> I understand that. I agree. Onion and garlic always, right? <laughs> This one, our onion's sprouting a little bit. Ooh, or I mean our garlic, excuse me. See that little green guy? So that, it's just trying to grow. Um, it's not bad, just pull it out. And basically, you could take this and you could plant it in the dirt and it'll grow into garlic. Um, that's, it's just growing, right? So, but it's fine. So, easiest way to, I think, Peel garlic, in my professional opinion, is the smash, right? Smash, smash, whoops, we'll do that one a little bit harder. Fat clove, smash. Um, I love garlic, so I am not going to, <laughs> look at that guy. I'm not going to worry that these are huge cloves because I think you can't really go wrong with more garlic. So that one's kind of sprouting as well. And this one as well. So all you have to do if they're sprouting like that is you can just break the garlic in half and then just pull that out of the center. Um, or you can cut it in half if you wanted. If you already smash them, then it's easy to pull out the green bit that's sprouting. So I'm just going to pull that out of the center. And yeah, and it came, it brought the butt with it and that you don't really want to eat that. So that's kind of two for one. Get rid of it. The compost pile. All right, so these are funny little garlics today. Um, and then you wanna mince your garlic. So just run your knife through over and over and over and over. Um, so easy way to mince, 
hand on top of knife and then let your other hand just kind of move up and down quickly. Garlic's really sticky, so whenever I'm peeling a lot of garlic or working with garlic, I like to have a wet rag nearby or at least be near a sink so that I can quickly rinse off my knife, wipe off my fingers, stuff like that. So just gonna dice, and by dice I mean mince, 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 mince. Um, it's only Tuesday and I feel like it should be Thursday. Like this week has been so aggressively long and oh, spring break's next week. I'm really excited because I need a vacation because these kids are killing me slowly. Like a s slow, painful death by high schoolers. I described my high schoolers the other day as if you took 30 monkeys, gave them cocaine, and then asked them to cook. That's what I was like. It's so fun. I love my job. All right, so you want it pretty finely minced. You don't want big chunks in there. Um, so that looks good to me. I'm gonna push this aside. And um, my knife feels a little sticky, so I'm just gonna give it a rinse. Uh, my oven is preheated, 375. I have a convection oven, so it's about 350 with that air, right? Convection is the air moving around. I forgot to wash these, so I'm going to rinse these off. Mm -mm. Peppers are get sprayed pretty heavily with pesticides, and so it's try to buy organic if you can, but organic peppers are so expensive that they make it really hard to, um, to want to do it, but... You know, I I don't know. It's like food is life, and you should think of food as like what's giving your body its existence. So eating healthy, I think, is worth it. So just trimming off the white sort of pith area. Um, second bell pepper, I'm just going to go ahead and trim it away now. This may not be the way that you cut your bell peppers, and that's completely fine. Um, I just, this way works really well for me. Ooh, got a roll away. Okay, so you can just trim out this stuff. I'm trying really hard not to say um, because I think I say um too much when I'm thinking. So, trying to just embrace the pause. It's a good public speaking technique. Uh, we'll do about... Shut, shut it. He's laughing at me. We'll do about medium dice here. Doesn't matter if they get mixed up. I always just cut my peppers into strips first and then uh, go ahead. See, I just did it. And then just run your knife through. Again, you want to try to be as consistent as possible so you're not getting big, massive chunks and then really small chunks. You're getting consistent chunks. Consistently chunky. <laughs> so this is about a medium dice. A large dice would be what you would cut maybe your potatoes. Like that big would be a large dice. We're aiming for medium dice. So just FYI. You can always look that up. You know, if you really wanted to learn. All right. Keep dicing these guys, cut them into strips, work in small sections if you need to. I always tell my students it's easier to work in small sections than in really large areas. Like if you feel uncomfortable grabbing a ton, making a bunch of strips and cutting through them, then don't, right? Just do two. You could just do two strips like that. It's going to take you longer, but you'll get faster eventually. Man, I'm gonna need an appetizer beer. Except it's Tuesday. So I'm not allowed to drink beer until Thursday. That's the rule. That's my rule. All right, so here we are. Almost finished with these guys. And then for your jalapeno, um, if you like the spice, that's a big hunk. If you like a lot of spice, 
go ahead and keep the seeds. I'm going to ditch the seeds and then I'll season it later with this amazing hatch chili powder that I bought in New Mexico for six dollars for this massive baggie of it. I haven't tried it yet and I'm kind of nervous because it's hot. They're out of the medium. It was either hot or extra hot and I figured well let's go hot. So jalapeno um cut off the top this guy here splice it lengthwise so lengthwise and then you have all the seeds on the inside you can either use your knife to remove those seeds just gently kind of running your knife along the inside of the pepper or you could use a spoon the spoons work really well too I'm trying to not get another instrument dirty so we'll just do that okay if you use your hands and the pepper spicy make sure you don't touch your eyeballs because that sucks so for jalapenos it's always easier to cut pe any peppers from the inside versus from the outside so you want to cut your jalapeno into nice thin strips we're gonna make a brunoise this is considered a julienne long thin matchstick and then a brunoise is the squares so are the squares the tiny little squares so you make your matchsticks and then you just run your knife through and you make these perfect cute little squares look at those little nuggets all right so run your knife make your juliennes the thin strips as thin as possible i always use the tip of my knife it's sharp right so you can just slice it through and then bunch them up together again you don't have to bunch up so many at the same time and then just run your knife through to get your small little brunoise perfect all right so from here what I'm going to do is heat up some oil olive oil I always use olive oil I think it has a better flavor but if you didn't want olive oil you could use coconut oil you could use vegetable oil canola oil grape seed oil whatever so heat up some oil and then I'm going to start with the onions, saute those, add the garlic, jalapenos and bell peppers and kind of just let them get nice and soft. And then once we're there, then I can start prepping my other stuff and then basically you just add everything in layers, put it in the oven, call it a day. It only bakes about 15 minutes, so it's really not too much, right? You're just baking it for all the flavors to mold together okay that light's kind of full i'm gonna have to turn on the overhead light all right so let's let's grab you let's turn on some light Ooh, let there be light all right how do i flip this there we go okay so i have my little pile my mise en place right here Garl, oh, not garlic, garlic, minced bell peppers, jalapenos. Then I'm taking my onions and I'm going to, I'm heating my pan, add some olive oil, maybe, I don't know, it's probably like a tablespoon of olive oil. You want enough so that it keeps the onions from sticking to the pan. I mentioned this the other day, but fat one of its functions in food is a medium for heat transfer so if you you think of the fat as transferring the heat to your onions so that the onions don't burn when you're cooking them you're adding that fat and then that heat is going to slowly transfer into the onions cooking them nice um, giving that nice softness that we're aiming for so once it gets hot you can either test it by putting a piece of onion in it and listening for the sizzle sizzle that's the sound that we're aiming for or you can just kind of hold your hand over it to feel the heat. I think a lot of people don't trust that, which is understandable. And then we'll add in our onions. So I have over here rice. It's still going, right? I haven't touched it. You don't need to touch it until you can tell that the water is pretty much evaporated. Then you can, I'll tilt it to the side and kind of check for those bubbles and make sure it's nice and dried. So, so if you want, you're welcome to take one of these, pop it in. It sizzles a little bit, right? Got a nice little sound, so I think I feel comfortable adding all that. Yeah. 
hear the sizzle. It's a lot of red onions, but that's okay. Okay. So now we can go back over here. I'm going to transfer the peppers and jalapenos and everything into the bowl. So then it will free up my cutting board so I can work on the kale and everything else. All right. Um, okay. And then all this stuff I can add at the same time. So I'm just going to add this to the bowl. Oops. Here, you can see what I'm doing better a little bit over here. Trying not to spill. Generally, you want to not use your blade of your knife to like scoop things up. It's really hard. I do it all the time. I mean, it's okay. It's just going to dull it faster. And unless you have a good knife sharpener, um, it might not be such a good thing. Okay, so everything's in here. All my beautiful veggies. I've also already measured out all these spices. Uh, we have chili powder, sea salt, coriander, cumin, smoked paprika, all these delicious flavors in there. So that's already pre-measured. It's just a lot easier to do it that way. So I'm gonna sit there. Onions are sauteing. You can use a spoon to stir or flick of the wrist great way to practice if you feel uncomfortable tossing is with macaroni dried macaroni or a piece of bread just kind of flipping the bread it's a wrist flip motion I'm cooking this today in a not necessarily a saute pan it has a little lip it's more in the style of a wok you could say it's not a wok it's, it just has a lip so It'll, it's not, is really conducive to flipping because it doesn't have that nice sloped rim. Okay, so we need tomatoes and juices so I can get that prepped here. Just peeling that off, obviously, that was very easy. Uh, black beans, I always rinse the beans. I try to get like, if there's salt on them or the juices, I kind of rinse them. Some people say that if you rinse the beans, it makes you less gassy. I don't know if that's true. I think it's all about the fiber. So, can opener. We'll strain these. And then basically all I have to do, always open your cans all the way too. I hate when people only open them part way because then they get pressed down and they stick their finger in trying to get it up and then they slice their finger and it's like a nasty jagged cut that really hurts and sucks to heal so try not to do that I'm gonna clean up some of my mess here this is my compost bin slash pile you want to try to work as neat as possible I'm not as good at that in my house as I am in the kitchen at work or when I used to work in kitchens because when I'm home I think I just kind of I'm real more relaxed you're kind of like oh yeah blah, blah. which is why more people are actually likely to get food poisoning foodborne illness in their own home than out because they don't take the precautions that you actually should whereas in a restaurant people are like following all the rules and they're being super sanitary and they're doing all these things and at home you're just like oh yeah we just put this raw chicken over here and it's okay and I'm not gonna wash my hands wash your hands your hands are dirty fact cell phones are dirty okay I need some corn frozen corn always treat, try to keep some on hand it's cheap it's easy it's in the freezer it's not a big deal scissors I like to cut just a little bit off at the top and then let's check on the onions give them a stir they're looking pretty good I'm let it gonna I'm going to let them go a little bit longer so that I'll show you before I add the rest of the foods just so that they develop their flavor a little bit more it's gonna bring out some of that sweetness like I said and then I'll add in the peppers because I want those to have more of that mouthfeel, that toothiness to them. You don't want your peppers to be really soggy and gross. So that's why onions first. Even if your recipe doesn't say to do onions first, always do your onions first. And do your onions first and then do your garlic. 
don't do the onions and the garlic at the same time. They they need different times. Like onion needs longer than garlic to go. So that's my soapbox. People may disagree with me, but I think that's correct. So that's what it's gonna be. Frozen corn, half a cup. This goes in um, once we're done with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that measured now. And I think my onions should be about ready. So let's, shall we take a look? Yes. Okay, so red onions. We got some nice caramelization starting. Oops, a little hot spot back there. It's probably because my Le Creuset is in the way. Let's scoot that over. All right. Sorry, I'm not good at multitasking with the phone in my hand. Okay, so those look nice and soft. They have, they're more translucent now, which means that they're They've sweated properly. So we can go ahead and add the garlic and the peppers. This bowl here. And I'll scrape out the bowl as well. So just stir that together, trying to get everything nice and evenly incorporated. I'm actually gonna turn down the heat. I think the heat was a little high. And then I'm gonna take a moment and scrape out the garlic. Just pop that in there. So whatever's left in the bowl, the garlic's sticky, remember? So you wanna make sure that you get all the last little bits of the garlic. Now I'm gonna let this go for, I don't know, maybe four minutes or so as I prep the rest of my ingredients that I'm going to add in there. Set the spoon over it's so hard to do. there we go in the spoon dish and we'll come back over here okay so measuring out the corn this is one of those things that you probably don't have to measure too precisely if you like more corn add more corn if you want less corn add less corn whatever works for you right the world is your oyster, except for not tonight, because we're not eating oysters. Except my husband ate oysters and put the gross tin in the recycle bin without rinsing it first. He's not even listening. Okay. Frozen corn, just put it in the bowl with everything else. So the next step is going to be adding the corn, tomatoes, black beans, spices all together. So I can just add it all together. I'm not, I, there's not really a need to like dump the tomatoes out of the can right now. So I don't need to do that, but I do want to drain my black beans. Again, get the juices off. I just like to clean them a little bit. You could rinse them, but you don't, you don't have to. It's mostly just to get away the liquid that's kind of helping preserve them and keep them soft. All right. So, also stopping to stir my veggies. I'm over here, see, hi. And then we'll strain the black beans into the sink. I have this, all I have is this fine mesh sieve and that's all I've been using since June. And I keep wanting a proper strainer, colander, and I just, every time I see one, it's just not right. I don't know why I'm so picky about a colander, like it's a colander, but they're either like white and plasticky or they're so, I don't know, I just, mm, that'd be the right one. So until then, we shall use the mesh strainer. I like to rinse the can just to get those last remaining beans out of there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna let this sit to drain while I check on my mixture. So I think it's looking pretty good. I'll take you along for the ride. All right, so yeah, looking pretty good. Got a nice color on those onions. The bell peppers are looking pretty lovely. Nice vibrant color. This would be a great dish. You could actually add in, I was just thinking about this, you could add in tempeh if you wanted to make it have a little more protein. I'm gonna add black beans, so I'm gonna get some protein there, but you could add the tempeh, and I think that would help 
if you were you know trying to make it a little heartier uh, of course you could add chicken or beef or anything like oops anything like that but I'm just gonna do it as is tonight because that's what I was planning so I'm gonna add my corn into the pot let that get going for a little bit just thawed out kind of stirred in slightly and then we shall add the spices we want to try to add the spices sooner rather than later to let their flavors develop okay i'm gonna flip it again okay so this was my lovely spice mixture i'm just gonna sprinkle that all over it is a ton of spices but um it's i mean it's not spicy it's well spiced it has a nice flavor and then you mix it with the rice and the beans and so it's going to pack more of a punch okay so from here let's add the beans give it a nice little stir stir all right and we don't want to cook the beans too much because they'll start to break apart because they're canned beans now here is where we can check on the rice so this is wild rice um, what I like to do is tilt it to the side and if water doesn't run up so there's a little bit of water running up you can kind of sorry see through Martha Martha Stewart logo there's a little bit of water there that way I don't have to take off the lid it probably needs just a few more minutes like three possibly and then we'll be good and then this mixture mm, that looks freaking good I'm so hungry this is really late to be eating I also need my diced tomatoes um, and you always want to just give your cans a nice little rinse before you recycle them helps keep your recycle bin clean and then it's also easier on the recycling but I found out they don't actually have to be as clean as a lot of people think recently uh, if you're in Colorado or if you're not in Colorado the Colorado Public Radio bit that they do called Colorado Wonders they answer questions about called that people have about Colorado they did one on recycling and it was really fascinating and I suggest you listen to it okay so it's been about a minute or two and there's there isn't any water so I'm gonna turn off my flame on that guy there and then come back over here in the mess it's kind of embarrassing I should clean up a little better next time and what we're going to do is rinse the kale saute the kale add the kale last I mean and then throw it in the casserole and pop it in the oven you could add cheese if you wanted I've turned it down pretty low so I'm not cooking it too much you could add cheese I'm going to top it with avocado some of this hatch chili powder which we're gonna find out how spicy it is and some lime so for kale you could use this kind the lacinato kale work the di that dino kale works as well um, I don't need too much I'm probably gonna do like this this many kale leaves a nice little bouquet give them a rinse especially if they're um, I mean just give them a rinse like always wash it off we found little nice aphids in there once and you know especially if you buy organic and also at the store like I don't put this in a plastic bag when I check out and so then it's touching the conveyor belt thing and you know so just rinse your kale it doesn't have to be crazy good you just want to make sure you rinse along the spine so along the stem give it a little tap and then the best way I just grab the kale and I just peel it off so you can just grab the kale kind of hold it upside down and then just pop it right off pop it off I love the the great British baking show they're so it's the greatest show their little accents my bake was so bad Kevin doesn't think I have a good British accent in my head. My accent is perfect. <laughs> Just so you know. Okay. And then I kind of grab the kale in a bunch. So I'm grabbing it all together. And then just slide your knife through. Try to remember to make a claw, if possible, 
you don't want your fingers. So like a C to an N or just make your little claw right there, right? Don't chop off your little fingertips. That'd be sad. And then, so I t slice it all one way and then I rotate it and then I just go the opposite direction. And then that usually gets it good enough where it's not like too big of chunks. Okay, so this is going in with everything else. Grab all the kale, pop it in the pan. Give this a little, nice little stir to kind of get it sauteed a little bit. And then from there, we're just going to taste it. Taste your food, always taste your food. Pet peeve is when my students are like, here, miss, try our food. And I'm, I say, oh, did you try it? They're like, uh, no. So try your food because it might need more salt or more spice or whatever, especially if you're making it for other people, try your food. Always taste your food throughout the cooking process too. If you're not used to stuff like that. So I'm just gonna try my food. Oh yeah, that's good. Mmm, it's perfect. Just kidding, okay. So I might not need this. We'll see once I dilute it with the rice. Okay, so stir in the kale. The kale's gonna wilt and cook a little bit more in the oven too. So you don't have to worry about sauteing it the whole time, right? So all I do here is I literally am going to mix this with the rice, pop it in my casserole pan. Doesn't that look lovely? Mm. Pop it in my casserole pan, this guy right here, and in the oven. You could put cheese before you put it in the oven. If you didn't want it to get too crispy on top, you can cover it first, and then that'll kind of steam it and keep it from getting that really crunchy, crispy top. If you want the crispy top, don't cover it, or you could cover it and then remove it in the last couple of minutes. You're not on the film, Kevin. Um, you could put crushed tortilla chips on it. I was thinking if there's anything else I'm missing. I think that's it. Anyway, you know how I like to end with a shot of this, the Xena dog, so where is she? There she is. Hi, Z. You wanna say hi to the crew? Look at that face. She wants her dinner. She's kind of upset because it's late and she hasn't eaten yet. I feel ya, dude. I'm hungry too. All right, y'all, thanks for joining. Oh yeah, she's got an itch. Have a lovely evening. See you next time. Bon appetit.